It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, June the 13th. Good morning. I am uh, I, I'm comfortably not numb at all. I'm wide awake, feeling very good, untased. Uh, you know, things could be a lot worse. I think phased. Is that the word you were looking for? Unfazed? Un, no, no, untased. Oh. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I watched some sports last night. I had yeah. some fun with some mm-hmm. friends. And at no point in time did anyone tase me. So I, I feel pretty great. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, you know, night, I, tased night. Here's, it's the kind of thing, you know, you see it happen. You're like, oh, no. And then what you're really thinking yeah. is this is the greatest part of the night. Last night in a Major League Baseball game, a drunk 19-year-old college kid became an American hero. In Cincinnati last night, a kid charges the field uh, wearing a Johnny Bench pullover jersey. Johnny Bench last played in 1809, as far as this kid knows. Approaches the uh, Cleveland Guardians, uh, one of the outfielders. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Just chatting. Literally a fan, drunk fan on the field right before the ninth inning. And then the police charge him. He does a backflip, a standing backflip, <laughs> nice. and then takes off running. And as he's being chased by one of Cincinnati's finest, I mean, the place must have been going nuts. This is, I, I, I mean, I never see this sort of thing in person. And then, of course, the officer did what he had to do. In case you're wondering what I'm referencing, uh, the, as the kid turns and runs from the cop, the cop, you see him reaching for his belt, not, not going for the gun. But going for the taser. And you know what the kid was thinking when he saw that happen. Yep. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't do anything. Ow! 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 Owie. No, he did something. He did a backflip. How can you tase a drunk kid who does a backflip and lands it? Uh, it? It seems like overkill, but, you know, anytime you can use your taser, I'd be using that sucker every day if mm-hmm. I had one uh, every moment of the day. But uh, On yourself to get started sometimes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right to the sack. Yeah. I. Um, uh, it looks like the cop helps him do the backflip, however. He got an assist there on the he backflip. <laughs> he, well, he's the spotter. He's the, yeah. You can tell the officer had a kid in gymnastics. He yeah. went straight to the spotting exactly technique. What I'm seeing. I've helped Sid uh, with several. You yeah. just got to stand there and you know kind of give yep. him that extra little flip little boost so he helped him so he could chase him down and tase him that seems like overkill to me but it makes for a great moment and I, uh yeah i totally understand that you don't know what anyone's really up to he he should not be in the outfield yes. he shouldn't be to- i totally get that but once the kid does the backflip and starts running I agree with you. I'm like, really? You, you couldn't, you don't think that a few other cops could have gotten involved and just tripped him yeah. up a little bit? The full on tase. And there are still photos of, of every bit of this. The back, there's backflip photos, but as the tase hits the kid, his face is contorting in pain. And I'm sorry, it's hilarious. It's just one of the funniest things I've seen. He was uh, booked, held overnight in front of a judge. The judge, uh, <laughs> the judge last night says, uh, he looks at him and goes, the judge, very casually, a guy named William Mallory says, everybody thinks you landed that backflip. And the kid goes, I'm pretty sure I did, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's having fun. I thought Diaz nice. should have come out of the dugout and just beat him to a pulp with a bat. That would have been fun. That, well, you know what? We'd watch that video. I mean, yeah. fun or not. Um, Johnny Bench, who, of course, the Cincinnati Reds legend there, the catcher, the legend himself, uh, the kid was wearing a bench pullover. Johnny Bench tweeted a photo on Johnny Bench's official Twitter account. There's a picture. It's the cop. It's the photo I referenced. As the kid is screaming in pain when the tase hits him, the cop in full pursuit, very focused, and Bench like autographed the tweet. Great catch, Cincinnati's finest, Johnny Bench. I mean, seriously, you're getting an autographed tweet of you tasing a fan from an icon. That's a good day for any officer, no matter how you slice it or dice it. Yeah, I guess, even if it's Johnny Bench. No matter how you phase it or tase it, I guess is the new expression we should go with. I, I, man, I, that's just, that's good stuff. I, I've, mm-hmm. I've been at games, we've all been places, and you're thinking, eh, I, I, I'd like to run out there. I'd like to be on the field. Maybe I'll do this. I mean, Tony, you, you have a history of taking your clothes off mm-hmm. before doing mm-hmm. things like this. I've been very tempted many times going to games to do something like that. Now, now, when you see something like this, does this make you think you missed out? Does it does it make you think maybe there's one last run in the tank? Yeah, maybe thinks there, there's a, a creative pathway to find a way to make it happen. 
I love it. I What's love it. What's the anti-tasing gear you can wear? Um, something protective. I think what the cops are wearing, yeah. You got to wear mm-hmm. one of those flak jackets or something like that, okay. maybe. Yeah. So, Surplus Because this one was the one with the wires and the little prongs, yeah, you know. right, and yeah. They stick into you, so, you know, yeah, maybe some Kevlar. Or maybe, maybe you know what, let's get you a full cop uniform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I could. I'll get a fake mustache. <laughs> fake, fake mustache. Uh, you, you, f- <laughs> cop, cop at the ballpark. Cop at Target yeah. Field. Str- and then it turns into the stripper cop. Then it turns into the streaking cop. Ooh. And then you're tased. But we all have a great story. Mm-hmm. I love this plan. I Thank didn't you for do that. Anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. Oh, take your tase on like a man. <laughs> no kidding. My God. Um, we don't have to go in too deep, but uh, for the record, as long as we're here, uh, the twins last night just exploded <laughs> against uh, Carlos Correa. Five hits, uh, 24 hits for the team, a 17-9 to victory. Uh, that's that's like 90s steroid baseball. What in the world was happening at Target Field yesterday? Uh, so, hey, the Twins, you know, it, it, it's, it's an exciting team. The bats are hot. Tony's going to go get tased in the nude. We've got a lot of great things we're planning here on the KQ Morning Show. It's also Father's Day this weekend. Fatherly aptitude test time. Marley Gorman coming in strong. Let's see how well we know each other. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is time for the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Hey, good morning, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Good morning, Steve, Zep, Tony. Good morning, everybody. And tomorrow, movie reviews. And I've got to tell you, there's some exciting movie news coming your way tomorrow. And don't forget, the only place to see movies is at Marcus Theatres. And every Tuesday, $6 gets you in to see any movie exclusively at Marcus Theaters. You know, I have been so, so privileged and honored in my long career to interview some of the greatest sports heroes ever. Henry, Aaron, Ted Williams, Wayne Gretzky, Joe Montana, Tom Brady, uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson. But I got to tell you, one of the nicest, if not the nicest, who I first interviewed decades and decades ago, was the NBA logo Jerry West, who died yesterday at the age of 86. What a great guy, great basketball player, Jerry West. May he rest in peace. You know, I have wanted to uh, share this with you for decades, but I haven't. I've held back, but I really think you should know that one of the biggest jerks in Hollywood is Will Smith. Honest, I don't make this stuff up. Final comment on those clowns, those clowns who decided that they did not want to put 22-year-old phenom Caitlin Clark on the Olympic women's basketball team roster. So uh, this committee puts out this press release yesterday saying that the most important thing to them was winning the gold medal. And they don't care about TV viewers. Really? Really? The women's Olympic basketball team has won every Olympic gold medal for the last 33 years with a record of 70 wins and only three losses. Hell, they could have cut the roster from 15 to just 10 and put Cher on the team that still would have won the gold. The main reason that Caitlin Clark was left off the roster, I I can't tell you on radio. But it involves shame, 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 and it's not on Caitlin Clark. I'll just leave it at that. Little show business, business. Boy, bad news here in Los Angeles. Movie and TV productions keep leaving L.A. They, they're leaving in groves, going everywhere, including even Minneapolis, St. Paul. The reason? It costs more to shoot in Los Angeles than anywhere else. And boy, that's costing a lot of jobs here in L.A. Camera people, set builders, caterers, lighting, sound, costume designers, drivers, hair and makeup, and on and on. Do you know that over the last 10 years, 20% of productions, 20% have left Los Angeles. And here's a question for everybody. Would you turn over your house to a Hollywood film crew for $5,000 a day? Well, a lot of people in Los Angeles do that every month. And usually it involves a five-day shoot. That's $25,000 to turn your house over to a Hollywood film crew for five days. 
I say, hell yes, I do that. Again, movie reviews tomorrow. Have a great day, Mike Evans. See ya. There's the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Right now, it's time to look back. June 13th, 2003, Roger Clemens of the Yankees became the latest member of the 300 win club on the same game he also got his 4000th career strikeout afterwards he said it's been a lot of hard work and it's paid off i've been fortunate that i still have my fastball he was 40 years old and uh as he left the game it was in fenway park he'd originally been with the red sox of course he got a standing o and if you see the footage he's glowing from all the steroids <laughs> you can see him from outer space yeah he said that was going to be his last season. He went on and played four more seasons. Again, he glowed green like neon. <laughs> Douchebag. He always was. Steroid crazed Roger Clemens. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, June the 13th. I'm very glad to be with you this morning. Uh, we go to bed early around here, generally speaking. So, um, you know, we miss a lot of things that happen late at night. In fact, my dear friend Brian Zepp was shocked to discover Seth Meyers still has a TV show. Yeah, I knew that he did have the late night show, the late, late, late yep. night show. But I, yeah, I guess I just didn't know it was still percolating along. Don't watch a lot of late night TV. <laughs> 11 seasons in. Um, wow. <laughs> they're, they're, why is that funny to you, Tony? Oh, I don't know. That he didn't know he was even on the air. <laughs> I, I have watched. Okay. okay. Um, I'm it's learning all world. about Billy Ray Cyrus about 30 <laughs> years too late, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. You Ooh. learned about him perfect. You wanted right. a 30 year break. I just Trust me. Achy Breaky Heart into my MP3 playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I did. The, uh, the Seth Myers, the late show on NBC, late night with Seth Myers. It's what comes on after Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. That used to be Jimmy Fallon's show. Then he moved up to the Tonight Show. He brought the roots with him to the Tonight Show. And then Seth Myers, now 12 years ago, hired Fred Arnold. Armisen, his former oh, castmate on him. Saturday Night Live. Fred Armisen is a musician, a, a drummer, and so he was the band leader for for the Late Show with Seth, uh, Late Night with Seth Meyers for years. But then Fred Armisen, here's the cool thing about the band: being a comedian, being an actor, he was hardly ever there. So when he wouldn't be there, they would bring in guest drummers. So for every week there'd be a different drummer with the house band. And it's, it's a very unique and cool thing, especially if you're a drummer who gets to be a part of that. NBC just let the band know after 11 seasons, yeah, budget cuts. You guys are out of here. What? Sorry. Wow. We're going to continue the 12th season of Late Night with Seth Meyers. There will no longer be a house band. No live music. What? Budget cuts in broadcasting? Uh, go cr Ooh, isn't that crazy? I hope go this figure. doesn't make it to radio. Um, I, and Seth Myers is apparently very upset about it. Not <laughs> not so upset he's going to you know not knock a million off his salary, but you know the the point is. Uh, but but it was a kind of a cool thing, um, and it's it's an interesting thing to imagine now. There's going to be a late night show that for eleven years, just it, whether you care about the show or not, you've done one thing for eleven years, and now they just come in there like um. Yeah, this show's doing great, guys. But uh, anyway, that massive part of the show, get rid of it. Boom, you're out. Yeah, not necessary, huh? Not necessary. Uh, budgetary reasons, the 8G band, that's what they're called. Fred Armisen, one of the, I, I think he's absolutely hilarious uh, and, and very bizarre in a perfect way. Um, he, he does the German drummer character. I can't remember his name. But he did a series of instructional drum videos with live fusion drumming <laughs> with this over-the-top German accent. And he talks about, I'll teach you how to groove and dominate every jam session you ever play with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just outstanding stuff. But uh, it's it's a drag for me. I, I was one of those guest drummers in 2019 oh, where you when my, oh. when my uh, book, Hard to Handle the Life and Death of the Black Crows, available everywhere books are sold. When that book was released that month, uh, I did a week on the Seth Meyers show as the house drummer. Oh, that's and awesome. That's awesome. It was, and it was a blast, and it was really cool the way they do. So there's the theme song every night that you play when they, it's time for the late show, and you kick in and you're jamming. Everything else, 
is new every day. The theme song's the same, but then all the other music that you you play, you spend the afternoon writing as a band. Like with, you know, I would go into a little room and they're like, okay, we have four songs we have to have today. And somebody would have just heard like say an Elvis Costello riff and go, well, let's do something kind of like that, but change the key. And then you just throw together ideas. And so every day you're on the show as the guest drummer, you're just playing songs that will only ever be played once. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a whole new set of music the next day. And they and they give you a writing credit. They're like, yeah, we all split wow. this equally. And so, like, I get these checks every now and again for literally 71 cents uh, when, <laughs> when, when the show replays somewhere like in France. But, um, you know, it was just a really cool procedure to go in there. So, so what does the cool. studio audience do now? During the commercial breaks, they just sit there quietly. I, g- I guess so. Murmur. I guess so. Yeah, because that's the funny thing. During a commercial break, you just kind of get up and start rocking, and the crowd gets going. You got to yeah. keep the energy in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was funny because on day one, I was very focused, right? Get in there, learn the theme song. Okay, got this, got this. And the band leader, he gives you like a head fake, like, okay, ready, and then go to the end. Hit the retard. The retard is when it slows down. Do, do, ba, we don't use that word anymore. Retard. That's what. That's a musical term, Brian. It's a it's, musical term. It's not the R word. Sure. And and so you know, it gives you the cue, and then you're all on in ears. And while the show's going on, he goes, "Okay, remember that thing like the double time? We'll do that into the commercial break." And I'm like, "Yeah, I remember it. I've, we learned it four hours ago." And I'm super focused. And I'm not really having fun because I don't want to mess it up. By the fourth day, I was forgetting everything. I was completely like, this is awesome. I was taking it easy, sipping a beer. <laughs> you know, you're just going about it. And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, the song's supposed to end because some of the songs you play are literally 14 seconds long. Um, but anyway, it was it was really cool. Kind of kind of harrowing at first, but a fun time. Great guys in the band. Everybody was cool. And now they're gone. So, um, hmm. God, Godspeed to the Seth Meyers uh, to the Eight G Band. Mm-hmm. They were there. It was it was a lot of fun. It, and it's uh, and I I heard from the guy that books the drummers right after I got to Minneapolis last year, and he was like, "Hey, good congrats on the Minneapolis job, blah blah blah." You know, keep us in mind if you're ever going to be in New York for a while. We'd love to have you back, but it never worked out. So now, I just have that one week. We'll always have the one week in September oh, of 2019. Yeah, what a cool experience. It was cool, and uh, and you know, and, and I, I've never met Fred Armisen, but I got a, I, I heard a message through somebody else that he dug my vibe on the show. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so I had that going for me, which was cool. Speaking of drummers who were kind of cool, um, a drummer I've never heard of, some guy named Greg Barton. He uh, last week did something kind of cool. He uh, went online. He said, "I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to play." Every Foo Fighter song ever released, that's 128 songs. I'm going to play them all in one sitting, and I'm going to do it to raise money for cancer research. Um, he said, uh, you know, he, he his, uh, let's see here, his grandmother, I'm sorry, yeah, his grandmother is battling cancer right now, and he wanted to honor her struggle, and he wanted to also... Uh, dedicate his performance to the great Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins, who died a couple years ago. Uh, there's still a link you can donate to his a fund. He raised seventy five hundred dollars as he was doing it. It took him nine hours wow. to play one hundred and twenty eight Foo Fighter songs, and I can tell you right now, those songs are crazy. There there are parts and time signature changes, and it's just so much energy taylor hawkins was like a whirling dervish back there and so this guy sat down for nine hours and just blasted through all this stuff um and and, and like i said in real time raised 7500 bucks i'm sure it's going to continue to raise more as it's now uploaded to youtube uh left hand cramping up during he said during song 57 my 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 hand cramped i didn't know if i was going to be able to finish yeah but he but he plugged it on through and I can tell you, as a man who has had hand cramps during a gig, not fun. What do you do? You just really hope no one notices that you can't hit the drum very hard anymore. Um, I, I had cramps. I've had both of my thumbs lock up. Not at the same time, but on either hand. Yeah. Uh, if you look at your hand, if you put your thumb across across the palm of your hand so it looks like you know the four finger thing you're high my thumb would lock into that closed position sometimes on either hand or it would lock in the wide open position it was like one or the other uh it would the the joint and this this is what happens when you're completely dehydrated 
and and continuing to just drink copious amounts of alcohol every day of your life, uh, your thumbs will lock, and it will happen during a show. And then you can't hold the stick anymore, and then you start just playing with one hand, and then you're like, <laughs> I wonder how long it's going to be before someone in the band turns around and goes, what the hell's, where's the hi-hat? Why do I, why yeah. am, what's happening here? <laughs> where's the hi-hat? No, yeah. yeah. Like you the minstrel cramps real hard. <laughs> Man, I'll tell yeah. you what. Yeah, I think it's a little, ex- I'm supposed to take some, uh, I don't know. Tylenol. Some Midol. Or it, was, it was Midol. Yeah. Midol, actually. Yeah, I know. I, I can feel your pain. I played tuba in seventh grade. And sometimes during those pep rallies, that middle <laughs> finger would just, and you couldn't hit that, that <laughs> oh, really? tone. So you're yeah. going to say it just extended up and yeah, it was just stuck straight off. up. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's brutal. I mean, there's been a lot of damage control during sets in my life. All of it's self-imposed. I mean, you know, just, I look back and it's like, what was I thinking? Like, maybe, I don't know, Steve, mix in a Gatorade once a week. <laughs> That's what they Do say, something. yeah, the cramping. You got to stay hydrated up there. The 90s were a heady time. That's all I can and say alcohol, in my defense. Steve dehydrates. Whew, that's what they tell me. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, well, well, it's funny, funnily enough, so does coffee. And literally, that's all I lived on for a while. Just, <laughs> just back and forth. Um. So a hundred, but 128 Foo Fighters songs. There's never been a moment in my life when I would be interested in even attempting Jeez. something like that. Now, I'm gonna track it down on YouTube. What's this guy's name again? Something Barton. Greg Barton. Uh, Greg Barton. Barton. Uh, yeah, because very impressive. I mean, I wonder if he was able to keep that energy for nine hours, or if he just kind of, you know, like big me, just kind of phoned it in a little bit, maybe some, toned it down or something. I'm sure at some point he's like, Dave, a ballad, please, somewhere. <laughs> I mean, come he on. Wheels in there, maybe. They got a few. They got yeah. a few. They got a few ballady type of things. Um, oh, I almost forgot one thing. I will recommend about the Seth Meyers' show late night. Uh, so Zepp, you you clearly haven't seen this over the last few years. It's he does. A, he has a segment called Day Drinking, <laughs> and he and a guest literally go to a bar, just the two of them, and just get hammered. And they film it, and they show an edited version. And some, I mean, it, it's really funny because yeah, he's yeah. a funny guy. He's well, a great comedy writer. Yeah. And and there are moments on the show where I and I see it all on YouTube. I'm not up at twelve thirty watching this, but man, I I have had some real, honest to God, that's the funniest thing I've seen in a while. Moments with that show lately. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, maybe if they yeah, aired it while I was day drinking, then I could get on board with it. <laughs> that's the that's part of the part of the charm. It's it just encourages you to get that first old fashioned of the day and enjoy it. So uh between that and the and the Sinatra songs we play occasionally, you know, <laughs> there's still there's still there's still a place for a guy who likes a, a proper cocktail around here. Was he a good guy? Was Myers a good guy to you? He was great. He was he was really cool. In fact, uh, so I was promo- he promoted my book every day. He would he would introduce me and say, "Hey, sitting in with a band tonight." And his book is just out now and he would hold the book up. And uh, my, my, my buddy that helped me with the book, who's a great music writer, Stephen Hyden, he and Seth had worked on something years earlier. So he was really, I mean, he just, oh, you work with Steve. You must be, you know, not a horrible person. Welcome. Uh, everybody there was great. It, it was really, really cool. And then I went down one floor to The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, because one of the guys in that band I knew, and that was a whole different vibe. A lot of tension. Everybody was very serious. You could tell it was like, there's the adult show, at 10.30 Central, and then at the 11.30 Central, late, late, late show, everybody was way looser. <laughs> totally, to- like, a different planets. Sense, yeah. yeah, it does. A whole different set of responsibilities, I think, for all those folks. Um, speaking of responsibilities, if you are uh, a member of a stadium security squad or a member of a, uh, of a police department, you may find yourself uh, having to be the responsible one and tase a kid who just did a backflip. I-, I know it sounds confusing. I'll explain. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Thursday, June the 13th. Oh, my goodness. uh, Tuesday night in Cincinnati, uh, the Reds were playing the Cleveland Guardians. And right before the ninth inning, a 19-year-old kid ran onto the field wearing a Johnny Bench jersey. He ran right over to Cleveland center fielder Tyler Freeman and was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And Tyler Freeman stands there and is like, yeah, what's up, dude? You can tell he's a little, his body language is a little uncomfortable. 
And then a, a cop approaches. The kid right there on the field pulls off a standing backflip, yeah. la- nails the landing. Spotted by the officer. Officer does put the arm out. You just like, like you can't help it. Like, oh, whoa, whoa, don't hurt yourself. And then, of course, the officer starts to chase him, can't catch him. So he pulls out the taser and zaps this kid right in the back. It's all captured on a million uh, cell phone videos. It's all over Twitter. A pretty crazy thing. The kid was taken to jail. The judge even gave him credit, though. The judge goes, "Hey, you landed that backflip. Nice job." <laughs> but um, and so the whole conver- yeah. yeah, the whole conversation about you know, is he really a threat? Well, you don't know. Of course, he could be. There's no reason yeah. on earth for you to run on the field at a game like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I'm I'm you know completely of the mindset. Yeah, tase his ass. What are you doing? Yeah. Look at what happened to Monica Sellis. You don't know what this kid's thinking. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Probably sounded a little something like that, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, he went down like a sack of bricks, didn't he? Just and then you he, he got that leg; his leg just kind of popped up involuntarily when you're running a good current through it. And yeah, you're right. You know, if you're going to charge the field like that, you know you're at least going to get you know hammer tackled, and they're yeah. going to take you back into the little uh, holding cell there in the back and just beat the snot out of you, or Ooh. you're going to get tased. You know, That's, yeah. That's part of it. If you don't get tased or they don't beat the crap out of you, I mean, did you really do anything special? <laughs> I mean, See, what do you have to show for it? Yeah, really. That's, it's, you know. that's a very good point. I've never been tased. Uh, a few of our listeners have the KQRS Facebook page. Um, we, we were wondering if anybody had been tased and what happened. There are a few comments. Uh, David wrote, most uncomfortable feeling ever, never again. That makes sense. Uncomfortable, uh, that's it? D- I mean, well, that's- uh, hang on, it gets better. Doug wrote, it was shockingly quite erotic. Uh, I'm not sure if that's real. That's a pun. Um, here, here's a good one. I was, de- I was drive stunned as part of training to be a reserve police officer. I ended up bruising my toe because both of my legs shook rapidly for five seconds. Afterwards, felt like I had run 10 flights of stairs in 60 seconds. I was exhausted. Sounds wow. like an orgasm. Pretty much. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I've never been tased. Um, I'm trying to think of if anybody I know has, if they've ever talked to me about it. I, I don't believe so. So happy to say that's never happened to me. Grabbed an electric fence once. That's about as close as I came. Oh, did you really? Got a volt going through me, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That, was a, that was a good one. I Got just your... set out the dog's uh, invisible fence we have in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder wonder they yelp. Yelp. I want to see how the batteries are working. Oh, it was working. Yeah. Man, that <laughs> heights. Hold, hold on, hold on. Did you actually put a, did you wear a collar and run through the line or were you just holding it? <laughs> well, I held it down at okay. the All right. level. That, that's uh, man. not the visual I had. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wanted that collar around your neck. <laughs> what, what, what is I your Rachel's it. safe word? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet hey, potato. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yam doesn't count. No, it's got to be both. It's got to be full. Don't try that yam thing. Um, after uh, So Chauncey Gorman lost his social graces during the COVID. We stopped going to dog parks and he kind of decided when we went back, I'll just fight dogs now. So he had a little, he had, he had a couple weird run-ins. I mean, honestly. And so I had to go back to the training drawing board. And uh, got some help. Called in somebody to show us how to use that gentle leader leash. I mean, the I mean the uh, the the collar, the thing he wears around his face. You know, he wears it all the time. He's great. Totally controllable now. Made a big difference. But when when the trainer was helping us at first, um, she talked about the the require. She said, you know, you might want to get a shot collar because Chauncey still loves to chase motorcycles. He freaks oh, out yeah. at, if he hears a motorcycle. He literally screams like he is being tased. He makes noises that most dogs don't make. It's it's a wild, It's there's no explaining it. He's under control now, but when we were working on this, she said, well, you know, shock collars can be pretty effective. And I was like, I don't know if I want to shock the guy. She goes, no, it's just, it's it's not, doesn't hurt him. And she explains the whole thing. She puts one on and she goes, there's all these levels of charge you can give him. She goes, you know, just hit this, no reaction. Okay, I'll turn it up to two, no reaction, no reaction. She literally turned that thing on as hard as it would go, and he never responded to the shock. Wow. And she was like, okay, yeah, this dog's different. I'm like, oh, he's different. He's he's a nut job. So, um, mutant. 
So I, 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 I'm, what I'm saying, Tony, is can we come over and try the shot collar electric fence and just watch him mock it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he'll be on one side. He'll be looking at Lulu like, oh, yeah. my God, what's the matter what with you? Was, is that all you got? I'd let him just catch one of those bikers one time, you know. <laughs> Pull him off. Give him a good but, yeah. I tell you what, man. He don't. He believe me. He would love nothing more than to track down a biker. Um, uh, you know, when you think of the country of Denmark, if you happen to think of Denmark ever, uh, you probably think about like you know a piece of fish, uh, a potato, <laughs> may, maybe maybe some cabbage. You know the the food. The foods. It's 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 you know Danish food. I don't know. Maybe there's some crackers involved. Some cheeses. Um, I, I've I've been to Copenhagen. I've been to a few different places in Denmark on tour. Don't recall ever having what they would call Danish food, though. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, now that I think about it, um, I'm from Central PA. My grandmother's Dutch, second mm-hmm, generation, mm-hmm. maybe first generation. Uh, now that I think about it, but I, pot pies, you know, just a lot of stews, yeah. and I mean, you're right, potatoes, it's good, good, hearty, yeah, basic yeah. stuff. I hit it with some salt, you know. Salt, salt is about as spicy as it gets over in Denmark. Yeah. Um, and by the way, the country of Denmark has basically announced to the world, no, 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 we don't. We, we're just going to keep eating what we eat. We don't want your craziness. They have <laughs> banned Denmark as a nation has banned a Korean company's ramen noodles. They said <laughs> they're simply too spicy. Right. And we refuse. The company's called Samyang. Instant ramen is sold all over the world. Yeah, Denmark has said there's a level of a chili extract that could be dangerous to children or frail elderly adults. <laughs> wow. Come on. All right. So this is it. I must have my grandmother's constitution. Me no like spicy food. It just it gives me a tummy ache. Never did work very well for me, and it's never gotten better. Recent, but I love Asian food, mm-hmm. and in particular ramen. But we go to the ramen places around here, and they dumb it down. Most of it, most of them dumb it down for us Americans. And, sure. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they'll have a spicy option on there, but they very clearly say this is spicy, and I get the nonsense spicy option and we all good to go except I went into uh, recently an Asian store. I'm passing an Asian store. I thought, you know, I'm going to stop and get some authentic Asian food and they had the packages of ramen in there and I couldn't read a thing on that. It was Japanese, and I right. thought, this is authentic. This is cool. And I took it home, and I mixed the one uh, powder in like you do, but then they had this other thing of powder. I can't read it. I did notice it was red when I was dumping it in there, and uh, I spent the rest of the night literally sitting in the toilet. I took a pillow into the bathroom. So, yeah, I must be. I must have a <laughs> Danish constitution. I get it. Um, I, I I think it's pretty funny that a country has gone to the to the mat over this one. Like they're going to the mattresses. The Danish. Um, this is this is really funny. The, the official statement was: if you have these products in your home, you should discard them or return them to the store where they were purchased. <laughs> and and you know the company Samsung Samyang is like, what? Well, this is ridiculous. We sell these things all over the world. Dane's getting a little a little. I think it's a little too. You know, come on. I mean. They, what they oh another thing that that they said they were like well we're worried that young people will be tempted to take part in like there's those social media trends the one chip challenge or they, you know I, I guess Danish kids uh, may just rip open those spice packs and chug them with water I don't know what they're thinking is going to happen but listen if you're going to Denmark just get ready for like I said just a piece of fish with some cream cheese and a potato on the side. <laughs> I think I think Lars took all the spice out when he moved to San Francisco to start Metallica. He? <laughs> yeah, he 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 brought it all with him. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is uh, speaking of uh, sensitive tummies and uh, and various things. Um, uh, there's an Australian. Uh, there's a guy named Dr. Carl down in Australia, and he is a he's like Australia's uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, if you will. And he has had a few people ask him questions. And one recent one was, "Hey, is it cool to put my feet up on the coffee table?" I know you're thinking, "Well, what what does that matter?" Uh, he's got an explanation for why that might not be a great idea. Check this out. Do we have Dr. Carl? There he is. Let me start. Should no. you put your feet 
up on the coffee table. We have two bits of data. First, if you get brand new shoes and wear them for three months, at the end of three months, 93% will have fecal contamination, that's a polite way of saying poo, on the soles. It comes from cat and dog poo when you're walking through a park, or you happen to walk into a public toilet, or your own toilet at home if you've got babies who happen to be really messy. The second data point, we're looking at a group of young males who live in houses without females. And when you look at their coffee tables, 70% have fecal contamination. So here's the PSA. Probably don't do it. Ah, you ninny. Uh, first of all, as a bachelor, the guy that likes to rock the bachelor lifestyle, yeah, we have poop on everything. We don't care. I don't actually eat off my coffee table. I put my feet up there with my shoes on, the boots, whatever. But I don't eat off of it, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's a little fecal matter. It's everywhere. Where, where can fecal. you go anymore without fecal matter? Yeah. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Yeah, it's just in the air. We breathe, Carl. Thanks. Hot Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Men living together. Let me tell you something. I, I I've been in a few. Uh, I've been in a few. Uh, you know, homes that were late. You know, female roommates. It's not like they're walking around. You know, like like Alice the maid cleaning up every day. Uh, I've, I've been to the beehive in Manchego. People are people. Yeah. Had a, I, I had a had a house I rented for a few years a long long time ago, and uh, a buddy of mine was it, had had was similarly. He's he was giving me advice as he had rented, and I had four people. I had uh, it was a, it was a three bedroom house, and I had two sets of four people that wanted to live there. Uh, four guys and four women, and they were all just out of college. And my buddy who'd been in, done, done this kind of stuff, he said, go with the dudes. Trust me, go with the guys. I was like, are you serious? Because everything in me said, oh, these young ladies will be great tenants. He goes, no, nah, man. He goes, just just, just take my word really? for it. He goes, well, first of all, because whoever you rent it to, they're going to mess it up. But if you walk in there, you can look at the dudes and yell at them, and they'll just get up and clean it. And he goes, if you yell at those four girls, he had this whole process. Right. And, uh, and they were actually pretty great. It was fine. But he oh. gave me some nightmare stories about... You know, the, the the renting, he said the girls are just as dirty as the guys. They just hide it better. And I was like, okay, if you say so. Good point. Yeah, the only yeah. bathroom I've ever refused to stand and pee in was the house my daughter lived in in Mankato with mm -hmm. nine other girls. Really? I'm like, I'm not even going to stand and piss in here. I'm just wow. going to go out in the backyard, which I did. It's just a I, uh, film coding. Yeah, I went, uh, no, no, it was... <laughs> Tony, I, I can't even really talk about it legally on the air. <laughs> How bad it was in that bathroom. It's a court order. I mean, you know me. I'll say it. I'll go there. But I just, I feel like I probably should not. I have a video in my phone of my daughter's kitchen uh, at her, the house she had two roommates with in college from uh, a year and a half ago. Right before Christmas, I, w I went to get her. It was a long drive. And I, and I walked into this house, this townhouse with the, where the girls lived. And I... Have never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> and I, what is it? I, and then the moment you move in with one, it's are you going to leave that sitting there? Your yeah. sock is on the floor. I'm like, really? Okay. Completely now, insane. Now clean. Okay. It should it should there, it, it should be illegal to allow a kitchen to be in the state that I saw a kitchen in. Wow. <laughs> and I and I had to clean. And it was like they're going home for a month for Christmas break, and like the roommates were already gone. I was like, we have to clean this. <laughs> if we shut this door and leave for a month, the house will it'll just fall apart. We have to clean. It was incredible. You know something that's not illegal? I just learned yeah. this. It is not illegal to teach second grade in California drunk. Right, are you serious? Great news, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, for the drunks, yeah. Check this out. A 57-year-old second grade teacher in California was arrested a few months ago because she was in class teaching, again, second graders hammered. <laughs> 8.30 in the morning, she was two times the legal oh, limit, her blood oh, alcohol level. Oh, oh, at 8.30 in the morning. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, she powered through all night. She powered through, kept going, in their teaching. I, I'm oh. not sure exactly who noticed if it was a student or another teacher or for that matter, you know, uh, you know, you know, Charlie G, the janitor, or whatever. But <laughs> somebody called. Uh, somebody called in and said, "Yeah, we need to get here." The authorities were called. They did her blood alcohol level again. Um, eight thirty, eight twenty a.m. I'm sorry, is when the cops were called. Uh, she she was then arrested. Uh, the district attorney, however, 
has dropped the charges. And here's the quote. Yes, it's highly inappropriate, but it's actually not illegal to teach drunk. They didn't have a, they didn't have a, there's not a law. Now she can probably be fired, I'm sure, and yeah. probably will be, yeah. but there's not a law in the books that she huh. had violated. Well, I, I suppose they didn't. Did they have evidence? I mean, how did she get to work? Another teacher I, pick her up, or maybe she was there all night, just boozing away. You know, grading they, those second grade tests. They or, could. They, they 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 could not prove okay. that any children had been endangered. All right. And they could not prove that she was drunk when she got there. Therefore, they couldn't go back and say, "Well, you drove that morning. You must have been drunk." So, I mean, I there there is a chance that she's just got you know a bottle of hooch in the school desk and she. She waits until she gets to work, but maybe, maybe I, one of the kids served her. <laughs> Wait a second, that apple was spiked. <laughs> I, um, although you got, I mean, if you're going to teach second grade, wouldn't you? I, I, listen, it's probably far more difficult than I think. I think just you know right. hurting the cats, but as far as the curriculum, you think you'd probably get away with a couple, you know? Maybe I, during I the would day. think, yeah. and, and I mean, it's an easy thing to say. If I had to sit in a room right. with second graders, I'd drink too. But trust me, but that's it's easy to say because it's true. None of us, none of us have what it takes to no. do that job. No. So bless her heart. She's out there doing truly the Lord's work. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Lord's work, the KQ Karaoke Cruise is back June 21st. Paddleford Riverboats, Paddleford Riverboats. We're going to have two karaoke stages, drinks with a KQ crew, free food from Lucky's 13 Pub. Tickets are on sale right now. Go to 92kqrs.com. This will be a blast. Sponsored by Alexander Exteriors and Dennis Kirk. That is June 21st. Today is June 13th, which means tomorrow... Uh-huh. Is June 14th, which means tomorrow night, uh-huh. my band Bagman will be at the Turf Club. We will be in order, okay? Rocking, grooving, swinging, rolling, <laughs> jamming, and what uh, What am I missing? Par- partying? Uh, partying down, yeah. Yeah, partying down. We're going to do it all. We're going to do it all. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Good morning, Thursday, June the 13th. Super Tramp with the Logical Song. That wasn't a Logical Song. That was called, what's the other one? Uh, Super Tramp, whatever. It's called you know, the, the other song. It's the other, it's that other one. Um, was it, wait, was that the Logical Song? What, what was that it song was, called? It was so, the Logical Song. Yeah, I'm like, what am I talking about? I'm getting completely turned around. I was thinking about, uh, you know what? I never had a Super Tramp album. There I said it. I never owned Breakfast in America. Sue me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to own it. Every radio station played like five songs off of it every day. That's exactly right. That's exactly why. I also, by the way, never. I have never owned an Eagles album. In my, I've never had one in my possession ever. You're the dude. What have they done? That's me. Uh, I am. Yeah, I am the dude. All I need is a, a, a nice robe and a white Russian, and I've got the whole thing figured out. <laughs> kind of do actually. Now that I think about it, you've got the hair. Mm-hmm. You just got to grow out the the mustache and goatee. But yeah, you've got it going on, brother. On the uh, on the Rock in the 80s cruise last summer, uh, everybody that showed up in costumes, uh, including, of course, Tony Lee, mm-hmm. um, uh, one, one of the listeners who was there on the boat, he had the best dude costume I've ever seen. I oh, mean, the yes. whole thing. And I was talking with him and I and I couldn't resist. I felt bad after. But I was like, you know, you know, the dude that movie's from like 98. And he was like, he was like, what? No. It's the eighties. I go, yeah. no, it's not. It's late night. It's yeah. after Fargo. Yeah, no. He's like and he was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> He's cool with it. I know I'm to, uh, which listener you're referring, and he only ever shows up in two outfits. Either he's the dude or a Viking. Like <laughs> right. I mean a hardcore Viking Ragnar thing. So yeah. Oh, wow. Nineties, eighties. Both both work very well in Minnesota. Yeah, they do. They, 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 they really, they really, really do. Uh, tomorrow night in Minnesota, specifically St. Paul, Minnesota, specifically at the Turf Club. Uh, my band Bagmen are going to be doing an entire set of Eagles songs. No, wait, no, that's not true at all. Although now that I'm thinking about it, we might have to we have to bust one out at Soundcheck and see if we can get through it. Any any recommendations? What do you want to hear I mean, us play by the Eagles? Uh, if you guys just acapella it out, Seven Bridges Road. Don't open the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be super tough. They are 
our stars yeah, in the southern sky. Yeah. It's beautiful. Otherwise, with that band, it's got to be life in the fast lane. It's got to have something with some balls. Yeah. It's got, yeah, it does have something something with some balls. We'll, we'll be ballsing up something. I promise you that. And uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, more than a few of our listeners will be joining us. And in fact, we got a couple tickets on the table right now for the last time giving away some bagman tickets tomorrow night. As it's Father's Day week, though, you're going to have to earn them with a very special game. Tony, what have we got? Well, there's wisdom everywhere if you choose to seek it from fictional TV dads to the bumper of the vehicle right in front of you. Yep, we're going to be playing bumper sticker or a TV dad advice. We're going to read a line and uh, you're going to tell us, uh, did you find that from the mouth of a TV dad sage advice or did you see that on a bumper sticker? I, I like it. Um, I like the drop where you, someone just said in that clip, it's not your fault your dad's a drunk. And I promise you, at least 20% of the people that heard that, their immediate reaction, well, then whose fault is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, families are fun, aren't they? <laughs> All right. So uh, TV dad or bump, TV dad advice or bumper sticker. I yep. dig this one. Uh, we've got a couple callers ready to play. Who's caller number one, Tony? First up is the lovely Stephanie from Minneapolis. Stephanie, good morning. Good, good morning, guys. How are you? Uh, we're wonderful, thank you. Are you uh, are you um, are you a fan of bumper stickers and or TV dads? <laughs> bumper stickers. All right, great. I, I like that better. Um, so uh, we got bagman tickets for tomorrow night. Uh, we certainly hope to see you at the show. Best of luck, Tony. Take it away. All right, Steph. Number one, I'd rather be sailing. Bumper sticker or advice from a TV dad. Bumper sticker. Correct. Yes. Yes. Number two, what small potatoes to some folks can be mighty important to others. TV dad. That is Sheriff Andy Taylor from the Andy Griffith Show. Oh, yes, a wise, wise yeah. folksy, <laughs> folksy man. Man. Well, t- t- Opie, you got to understand something, son. <laughs> yes. All right. Number three, lie, sell shoes and lie. Say it again. Lie, sell shoes, and lie. Oh, that's Al Bundy, isn't it? TV Dad. You are exactly oh, wow. right. Very specifically. Man, yes. bonus points for the correct call. Mm-hmm. Number four, make love, not war. TV Dad. No, sorry, Oops. bumper sticker. Oops. <laughs> sorry, Steph. <laughs> that's okay. Bumper sticker. That's oh, all right. we're going with the first answer, I see. Mm-hmm. Totally all right. okay. You got three more. Number five, be open to everything and close your mouth. Yeah. Um, I hope that's a bumper sticker. I'm sorry, it's a TV oh. dad. It's Frank Costanza from yeah. Seinfeld. I wish I would have <laughs> passed that one along to the girls. If you're listening this morning, ladies. Mm-hmm. That's a good line, though, isn't it? Uh, number six, I see a squirrel. I swerve. Bumper sticker. Correct. It's Boom. The, it's the right thing to do. And your last one, responsible people don't go around twisting nipples. <laughs> uh, I'm Sorry. TV Dad. Yes, that is, of course, Red Foreman from that seven. I'm show. having it made into a bumper sticker, however. <laughs> All right, good job, Steph. Yeah. Five, what is that, five for seven? Damn. Right um, anybody have the math on that one? It's, oh. you know, come on, you get these oh, odd right. numbers. Count on you guys for that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, that's I tough. Wasn't... I think five for seven, right? That's uh, 71%. Well done. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Thank God there's a calculator in my phone. All right, Stephanie, five for seven. That is rock solid. Sit tight for a second. It's time for, by the way, Mm -hmm. wonderful incidental music happening right now. I'm digging it myself. I I feel like I'm wearing a wide lapel and Gene Rayburn is about to say, how you doing? (laughs) Yes, it's very sad. Best microphone and game show business. (laughs) Man, no kidding. (laughs) Uh, you ever? You think you ever? You don't, if you were holding that that microphone with a really long, tall thing and the little ball mic on top, you right. just want to bite it like it was a little. <laughs> you just want to just take that actual microphone mm-hmm. like it's a like it's a cake pop. Yeah. I want to dub the night with yeah, it. Right there, you go. Ooh, there it is. Slap them on the hands a little bit. No, wrong answer. Smack right across the mm-hmm. knuckles. Caller number two. Who we got, Tony? Caller number two in her car in Edina. It's Amy. Amy, good morning. Good morning. Uh, everything going okay out there in the car in Adina? It's fantastic. Fantastic. I like <laughs> that. Yes. 
Fair enough. All right. Well, we got Bagman tickets tomorrow night at the Turf Club, uh, and we're playing Bumper Sticker or TV Dad Advice. Good luck, Amy. Amy, right. number one. Your first one is Visualize World Peace. Bumper Sticker. Yes, it is. Bam. Number two, Alone We Move Buckets, Together We Can Drain Rivers. TV Dad. That is, of course, the ever-responsible Mike Brady from the Brady Bunch. Really? Wise I don't words. remember that. What? I wonder what episode that was. Well, that's... Yeah, hmm, there, might have been the, the cave in Hawaii. No. Fighting been, the Rising River out on the farm. Was that Charles <laughs> Ingalls, maybe? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mike said it. It's true. Number three, ask me about my grandkids. Bumper sticker. Correct. Three for three, Amy. Number four, what would Jesus do? Oh, bumper sticker. Oh, yes. <laughs> I always thought that was what would Jesus do. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I was right. so confused. <laughs> I, I think he'd swing on the first strike. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm, I'm like. I'm like, man, yeah. these real people love baseball yeah, around here. That, yeah, always swing at that first pitch. <laughs> Jeez. Number five is shoot for the brains. <laughs> Soup for the brains? Shoot. Shoot for the brains. Oh, boy. It could be probably either, but I'll say um, dad. Good call. Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. TV dad. Yeah. <laughs> good advice. Uh, I love Ooh, it. Amy, you're five for five. If you get one of the next two, you're going to be our winner. Good luck. I thought he was telling his daughter to pick the brainy dude, but all right, Walking Dead, I get it. Yeah, mm, yeah that's true. Number hey, six. by the by the oh. way, before we continue, yep. did, did is the Walking Dead done? Is it still happening? Is what? what? Uh, it, 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 it wrapped up and then it came okay. back and then it wrapped up and then I read something the other day that they might bring it back again, just like a corpse. <laughs> yeah, would do. I was going to say that's the problem with zombies; they never know when they're they're already dead. <laughs> okay, for the brains. All right, fair enough. Let's do this, Amy. Two more, Amy. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes. No, don't. That's gross. You know, again, I think it could be both, but I think it's a bumper sticker. I'm sorry. There's a oh. TV dad, Phil Dunphy from Modern Family. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The great I like Phil it. Dunphy. And your yeah. last one. If you don't finish your crud, you're not going to get any crap for dessert. Dad. That is correct. <laughs> That's Dan Connor from Roseanne. Oh. I won. You did win, Amy. <laughs> Six for seven. I won. I won. Yes. Man, that's great. Amy, we're going to see you tomorrow night uh, at the Turf Club for Bagman. That'll be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, Stephanie, five for seven. So close. Nine days out of ten. Five days out of seven. That's a winner. But yeah. not today. You just ran up against the gauntlet that was Amy. Thank you both so much for listening and for calling and for playing. Uh, and I'm throwing this down right now for any of our listeners that have played for Bagman tickets and lost. I'm buying your first cocktail if you show up. You just oh, find me. Yeah, I'll be just the really uh, drunk one. No, no, you'll you'll track me down. Everyone's going to be saying I tell you that what, now. I lost Brian. Yeah, well, well I've, I've only got about a hundred bucks in my checking account, so right. I'll take about if the you, first five. Good man. If you can't find Brian, you can find me, and then I'll find Brian. <laughs> just, just, just you point at me on stage between songs. We'll we'll have a locate Zep every between every song. It's like Zep. Someone else needs a drink. We'll make that happen. Check the clown lounge. He's hiding in the. Clown Clown Lounge. Man. <laughs> um, so TV dads got me thinking. If there, is there a, 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 Tony, is there a TV dad that most or at all reminds you of your dad? Oh, uh, boy. Father knows best, maybe. Just his demeanor. Yeah. Really? Robert Young. Robert yeah, Young. Yeah, yeah man. Calm, That's more of an intellectual, one. yeah, gentle hand. That's lovely. Yeah, that is lovely. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I, I did. There oh, was right, Steve. You? How about the no. duck? Or is the duck uh, just stand alone? No, I mean not a TV dad. We used to, we we, we definitely uh, were referred to as a, our movie dad, the great Santini. If you remember the <laughs> oh, very yeah. heartwarming tale of uh, oh, Robert man. Duvall as the Marine <laughs> drill sergeant. Yeah, I don't know if he was a nominated for an Oscar for that, but he should have yeah. won one. That was oh, it was incredible. Great the, movie and a lot of as my dad's watch. Watching it, he's chuckling. <laughs> That's he yeah. found it funny. Oh That's no, great. he was like on, on oh. Great Santini's side. I That's wouldn't, great. I wouldn't put him quite there. My dad's a bit more of a red from that '70s show, I think, mixed with Charles Ingalls because he had a soft side, but mm -hmm. mostly it was red, is what we got yeah. out of we, him. Yeah. We, 
we watched the great Santini, and there were moments when my dad was absolutely 100 percent like, uh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, <laughs> yep, oh yeah, oh yeah. And we're just like we're all just watching it with him, like, huh? This is not the reaction we would want to be. We'd be hoping our dad would have, but Let's go okay. play some hope, Steve. Uh, my my dad loved the uh, the he. I mean, he just had this thing. Like there was, I remember my mom. My mom sang barbershop music. She was in the I Sweet Adelines, you know, and yeah. <laughs> big barbershop gal, and big chorus, and then also in a quartet. And if, if memory serves, she had a competition that that required her to go somewhere else, like out of town. My dad is leaving to take her to the airport, which is an hour drive each way. And 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 he was like, okay, he goes, boys, I'm taking your mother to the airport. When I get back, we're going to clean up the carport or something like that. We're going to do <laughs> something. Be here when I get back. I'm like, okay. Well, like two hours passed, two and a half hours and I'm just like, man, where is this guy? And I told my brother, I go, I'm just going to go to my buddy John's house. Just call me. Just call there when dad gets home. And my brother goes, no, nah, I wouldn't do that, man. He said, be back. Be here when he gets back. And I'm like, it's three houses away. I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. and, and so, of course, my dad pulls back in. Where's Steven? And he's, uh, he's at John's house. And he goes, well, you call him. And I come running back. As soon as I get the call, I'm right back home. And there he is standing in the driveway. And it was like say, he's standing there holding a Pose. Like, so as I come f- through the front yard, he's just, just, I mean, simmering. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like the disrespect I've shown to not be there yeah. after he, you know, and he, he took a detour home. It was way longer than I would have thought, but you know, whatever. <laughs> And just just the look on his face, and it just was that moment of like, what did I say before I left? Yeah. It was like the grilling command. I'm like, you said to be here, and where were you? Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, just get to it. Are we gonna? <laughs> where is this ending? That's the oh yeah, exactly. He, he he loved like turning. He was drill sergeant and district attorney all in one. You know, like the yeah. grilling. Was nonstop with him. I think one of the angriest times I ever made Dad. I remember that he leapt, you know, out of his chair was when I, you know, said, "Skip the speech. Let's get right to the punishment." I was about seventeen at that point, Ooh. and yeah, no, yeah, there's no skipping of the speech, and there's no suggesting of skipping of <laughs> oh, the speech. Oh, you just either. lengthened it. Oh yeah, no, it was. Yeah, no. Oh my God! I the only you know sometimes my dad would totally shock me by being really cool, and he was. Killing me one night about something to do with school. Um, I, I, I'm sure it was an, a math class, and I'm sure it was I had a D at midterm or something. And he called me into the den, and I sit down on the couch next to his chair, and he goes, "How many times are we going to have this conversation?" I'm like, "I'm trying, Dad." And he, you know, I wasn't trying at all. I hadn't even thought about trying. <laughs> and he's looking at me, and he's just going, and he goes, "What's going on with you? What? What? You're a smart kid, and you're doing this, and you know." And I'm just, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir." And then I suppressed a yawn. Like I literally had to yawn, and I'm doing that thing when you're when you're like, yawn. you know, you're holding your mouth together, but uh-huh. you're fa- you're like, mm-hmm. yeah. And he is looking at me, and he goes, "What's on your mind?" And I went, "Huh?" He goes, "What are you thinking right now?" And I I don't know where it can, I went. I'm thinking I'm really tired, and I'd rather just go to bed. And he goes, "Oh, all right, we'll hit the sack. See you tomorrow." Oh. Like just completely cut cut bait on me, and just I was dropped like, dropped his guard, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I was like. Okay, and I was like, I guess that's his way of saying, it. just just be a man and tell me what you think. But I was like, nine times out of ten, I would have got a shot to the chops for that one. I was like, <laughs> wow. I remember walking. I remember walking up to my room, going, I don't. I am really confused now, but but grateful. <laughs> it's the little things, yeah. the little things along the way. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, here's a quick question I got for you. What about um, you know next time somebody. Next time you're, you're, what would you think? I should say you, you go, you're somewhere in public. You need to use the restroom, and somebody's standing outside. Oh, uh, you know, figuratively speaking, with a stopwatch. Would you be comfortable with that? <laughs> Trust me, this is a good one. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line six five one nine eight nine rock. That's six five one nine eight nine rock ninety two KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, June the 13th. Ho, baby.
I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. Father's Day. Yeah. We've had a great week, a lengthy build up to Father's Day. Tomorrow the Lee Boys will make an appearance. Yes, sir. Tony's two sons, Hudson and Augie, will be on the show. And in just a little while, Riders Pop is calling in. We're, I mean, we are we're just living large this week. This is great. Yeah, I love the old switcheroo on having Riders Pop on. So we'll ask him the questions. He's not going to get anything wrong. He's nah, gonna it's going to be fantastic. Answers, and then we'll find out just how well Ryder knows her dad. I was I, really excited about this when I came up with it. When we were starting to talk about, it, I was like, "This is going to be so much fun." This will yeah. be. Now I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, the, the best the best laid plans. That's how that goes. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know I've never had an issue. Again, growing up in a house with a lot of people, uh, ten folks, not enough bathrooms, no real bathroom issues with me. If you got to go, you got to go. You know what I mean? Like, I, there, there's not a truck stop on earth with a dirty enough bathroom to keep me from getting in there and taking care of business. That's yep. what I'm trying to say. Yep. There's not a rest area. On the family Gorman trips as kids, we're driving to Detroit to go see Grandma and Grandpa, and you pull over at the rest areas on the Pennsylvania Turnpike because we're not going to pull off and pay the fo- the toll to get off the Turnpike, and we're not going to buy food. So we have packed sandwiches. We have packed sodas. We have our own food in the car. We pull into a rest area. We have lunch. And if you got to go you hit that nasty ass pennsylvania turnpike rest area you go in there and you take care of your business and what we used to do the gorman boys and we used to think this was the funniest thing ever in human history is one sometimes two of us you go into a stall and then you just start groaning and grunting making as loud <laughs> it just like you would hear any number of gorman boys go, ah! yeah, and then and, and I remember very specifically my brother Doug one time taking it to a point where he was literally going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> well, yes! I mean, like, and, I, you know, I'm seven, he's nine in there doing this, and I'm just, just dying, right? And we're And we'd go in there for, you know, 10 minutes. It was just awesome. And, of course, I now look back and realize any adult, would recognize these are kids and they're just goofing around, but we thought we were fooling everybody. We never, we just thought they must think, uh, you know, there must be a trucker in there, you know? But, uh, and I'm just all of these bizarre memories floating through my mind as I see that now, um, and and, well, there's just one place I know of, but something tells me this is gonna, this is gonna be coming around the mountain, uh, as she comes. A world heritage, world heritage tourist site in China. It's called the Yungang Grottoes. There's cave art that's 1500 years old at this, at this section, uh, at this, uh, these grottos in China, they have uh, public bathrooms. They've got a lot of stalls and they have installed digital timers above each stall door. Oh, so you can see how long it's been since that door shut. Since the person in there, you know, and everybody knows how long they've been in there. All right, so it's counting right. up. It's not one of these countdown things. Then the door just pops open. <laughs> and the that would be like amazing. Kicks, yeah, Lights right? go off. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Can you imagine if it's a little, if, if it, and then if there's a beeper, but it gets faster as it gets closer to zero. Like your backup camera in the car. Yeah, I did one more wipe. Oh my uh, god. Yeah. No, it wow. just it's no, it's an ascending. It's, it's so an ascending it people. It's an ascending timer. Uh and and so what what they're saying is what the authorities are saying is that no, no, no. Listen, this is a safety feature. This way in case someone's in there for really a long time, maybe they've had a medical emergency and they can't call for help. Mm. nonsense that is ridiculous yeah. this is entirely look get in there get it out work through it and keep it moving yeah don't no play in solitaire in there when i'm at home i've got to win a game of solitaire on my phone before i can wrap up my business and sometimes you'd be surprised <laughs> i know it seems like a simple game but mm-hmm. you just get a bad run of cards oh uh, sure I, I don't yeah. do that in public you know we got to keep uh, on schedule and keep things moving there are people in there that have to use it but uh, yeah, no, I don't. I would not dig the timer in the bathroom, like man. I, 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 I'm. My first thought was, you're going to start seeing this at airports. 
Yeah. You know, that, that, that's where they'll do it. That's where they'll put him in there. Well, I, yeah, you got to wonder in the airport sometimes. Now, I don't generally I have to think about the last time I had to actually use a stall at an airport. That doesn't happen very often. I usually mm-hmm. have my timing down pretty good, I guess. Unless maybe I had a long layover or something like that. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think in America... American dudes would like the timer very much. I just don't think we'd uh, we'd be all about that. I think no. there would be some blowback, as it uh, were. I agree. I think that would be. I think that would be kind of a tough one. Um, <laughs> Either that, I, or we just wouldn't give a rat's rear. You know. I have this. Make it a competition. Maybe it's an incentive. Is that all you were in there for? Sure, but it's fired that's up. That's nothing. Yeah, do better on your numbers. Or yeah. what if? What if it was like? What if it was like batting cages? You could pick your speed. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. I think I can drop that deuce in seventy seconds. Drop that deuce, yeah. and then you're running there, and they shut the door, and it just yeah, yeah. yeah I got this. Maybe I got they this. Had a leaderboard in there. Who was in there the shortest amount of time? Yeah, you know, like if you're at an arcade, you know, the old leaderboard on the the digital. Uh-huh. Display Play there at the end, yeah. like oh there, yeah, number one baby, yeah, high score in Galaga. Yeah, there could there could be a joint. Um, it's 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 time. It's the quickest time versus <laughs> amount of tonnage left behind, if you will. <laughs> oh, it's like uh, Chet Waterhouse, the speed fishing. You know, it's lap time and how many walleye you pull out of the uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know the 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 <laughs> speed. <laughs> Maybe speed skate combination <laughs> speed skating ice fishing. Yeah, I guess I'm only wiping once. I hope I get a clean pinch. Yeah, that's uh feces. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's literally it's everywhere. everywhere. Uh I I I remember I walked off a plane in Nashville probably 6 7 years ago and it was delayed late and I had been drinking on the flight and it's probably 1 a.m. and I walked right off that flight and I had to pee so bad and I walked in the bathroom and I was really I was like this is a really nice bathroom it's nothing but stalls wow it's so weird <laughs> and I'm in there and I just and I'm like but I was like I'm I I just had to pee but I'm like yeah I'll, I'll sit down I'll just take take a load off mm-hmm. and uh and I walked out of that stall and then it took me that long to realize like oh wait I think I'm in the um I think I'm in the wrong bathroom and I walked right out and thank god the airport was deserted but no and there was and my my flight was the only flight that had come in that late and thankfully no one from my flight stepped in there but as I exited the women's room there were th- several people right there walking off and they looked at me like Duh. Yeah. Thank you. Did you give him the old? Yeah, I got that toilet fixed. That yeah. really? Yeah, I should have. Oh, yeah. That 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 could have uh, that could have gone really really wrong. Oh, yeah. Hi, chicks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just making sure everything's uh, the way I thought it would be in here. Uh, uh-huh. huh. I've done, I've done I've, well, you know, you've taken the, sometimes the men's room is on the left, sometimes it's on the right, and you're stumbling along, maybe you've had a couple, I've done that, but not at an airport, but I've done that before, but usually you know immediately when you're in a woman's bathroom, and it's not just because of the lack of urinals, it's, uh, there's a fragrance, there's a couch. It's decorative. Usually, yeah, there's flowers. Wall hangings. Yeah, right. Throw pillows. Wall paper. <laughs> <A fountain. laughs> Throw pillows. <laughs> Got my nails done while I was, I was taking care of business. Um, uh, a, a, a flight. So, so anyway, the timers. That's a that's at a, a at, at a heritage tourist site in China. Also from China this week, a flight was delayed over an hour because a passenger boarded the flight. Imagine you're on the plane. Everybody's in their seats. The door is shut. You're pushing back from the gate. And then someone's smuggled pet gets loose. They had a pet in the purse or in their shoulder bag. It got loose in the cabin and hid, but nobody could find it. This was not a kitten. This was not a puppy. Uh Uh-oh. It was a sugar glider. A what? And if you're wondering what a sugar glider is, it's a flying Possum. <laughs> oh, you idiot. A flying possum. possum. All right. Well, I'm telling and, you what, your oh, flying possum oh. flies by me, and I'm, yeah. gonna, <laughs> I'm knocking that dog. I'm just telling you right yeah. now, no flying possums on the flight. A, a flying possum loose in the cabin means oh. everyone was forced to disembark. Oh, God. Uh, The animal was finally caught. The owner was arrested for the, quote, disrupting order on public transportation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, The owner went to jail. Oddly, the possum flew in the cockpit with the pilots as scheduled. No, that's not true. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't put him in the cockpit with the pilots. No. But 
here. I like the idea of the possum actually being allowed to continue on the flight as long as he was in a seat with a seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm on a plane, somebody and somebody, if I'm on a plane and and the person I'm sitting next to like opens zips open their purse or a shoulder bag and goes, "Look what I have!" And even if it's like the most adorable little puppy ever, I would be like. Yeah, I, 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 it would, I would be so annoyed. Like, yeah. what, what possible good can only, only problems can arise from you smuggling an animal on a plane? Yep, exactly. And it's, uh, and the problem is going to be everyone else's. Mm-hmm. It now has to get back on, rebook, and do everything. Yeah, incredibly selfish. And yeah, there, there is an American. His name is Jason Ellis. And he is now on Frontier Airlines' no-fly list, but he is still allowed to get on other uh, other airlines. He has a emotional support marmoset monkey, right. and uh, he's got the paperwork. He's got ID. He's he, but he travels with his emotional support monkey. But there was an incident on a Frontier flight, and without any details being shared, all I can tell you is he's no longer allowed on the airline. <laughs> I yeah, I a marmoset on a plane at thirty thousand feet. No, uh, none of this is good. You know what? Uh, sorry, you're such an emotional wreck. You need an emotional support monkey, but yeah, maybe flying isn't for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe not. Bus, jump on a boat, a nice boat trip with your monkey. That sounds exotic. It sounds throwback, but yeah, don't fly with the. What mm-hmm. is the criteria for an emotional support yeah, animal? No, there's I nothing mean, more calming than a, a crazed monkey. Right. Exactly. Do you have to take a test is you need a doctor <laughs> note i suppose you know saying you this required because they're real things hey listen mm-hmm. I've, I've got a couple of vet buddies that have their emotional support dogs it's a real thing it has value but we had yeah. a woman uh, a few years ago tried to get on with her emotional support peacock i just wonder if oh that's right like, yeah you know, like before, southwest yeah before we had recreational marijuana legally uh you know there was uh, there were shortcuts to get you'd go you'd find a, a guy that knows a guy who knows a doctor and maybe you got a medical marijuana card out of the deal i wonder if it's the same for emotional support animals if they just yeah right sounds good you have some trouble sleeping yeah, take your monkey on a flight um we had i have a, a dear friend who had a uh, a little dog um a lobsa obsa or i don't know one of those little pocket rats and um <laughs> but the dog was actually um it it she was uh, susceptible to having seizures and the dog would totally tip her off that one was coming yeah and so i mean it was a legit, legit yeah. it was a real legit emotional support dog um and uh, but but still, even with all the paperwork and even with the the vest and the the, she would have a seat. She would buy. She would fly with two seats. She kept, because you know she was going to have this dog with her, and she wouldn't leave it on her lap and make her sit next to someone. So she to travel on a plane, she had to buy two seats. It was a whole thing, and yeah. and. And still, everybody would give her grief. You know, she'd walk on and people would it just, she would talk about the hoop she had to jump through, even though it was perfectly legit. And the damn dog had saved her life. It was still, people just roll their eyes. And I'm that way too. When I see a dog in an airport with someone, my first thought is, yeah, like you said, you just knew a guy who knew a guy. There's no way that's really, right. that dog's really doing anything. And 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 I know someone who literally had that and I still am skeptical about it. So yeah, I do. And that's with dogs. You bring a peacock near me. A, there are young kangaroos. This is true in Australia. There are registered uh, emotional support kangaroos that are allowed on flights. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, as long as it's not like a dingo dog with those razor sharp teeth and bad attitudes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? Flying Man. with your baby and a dingo on the flight? It's not good. No, again, no, no. God, no. Again, a peacock. <laughs> Calming, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I just got a text, KQ uh, talking text line. Frontier doesn't allow any emotional support animals. It's not just this guy. All right, well, All right. maybe they've changed things up a little bit. Not their thing, I guess. Um, and then Liz wrote, sugar gliders are flying possums. They're super tiny. People carry them in their shirt pocket. Even more reason why you got to lock that bad boy down. They can hide anywhere. Come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's don't bring it on a flight. So what are you taking? It's not an emotional support animal. Don't bring it on a flight. Um, I did see something the other day about there is a an airline called Bark Air. Have you heard about this? No. no. It, check this out. Bark Air. And if you go to their website, finally, dogs can fly. It is an airline just for dogs. There you go. Yeah. Your, yeah, you got your dog airline. Everybody's happy now. Yeah, they run probably by have, dogs. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they have on there a little space. They have some, mm. you know, uh, bowls on there for them and everything. But I, I doubt, I'm sure they have limited flight schedules. They and fly. That sort of thing. They fly. It's a, it's a Gulfstream G5. They never book to full capacity. They want your dog to be able to sp- spread out. Listen to this. The cabin will be prepped with calming aids such as pheromone, music, warm lavender scented refreshment towels and hell? other comforts to help each dog feel settled. That sounds like a cheap flight. <laughs> Once on board, dogs will be served their beverage of choice, water, bone broth, you name it. I I I, <laughs> I, I, I this is absolutely crazy. Um I got to imagine it's probably the most expensive flight you'll ever book. Yeah, mm-hmm. when Lady Gaga wants to fly with her, well, no, she's going private. Would be someone she's doing okay. yeah, a couple of steps down from oh, Lady Gaga. Yeah. When they want to fly with their yeah, with their animals, with their pooches, because, yeah, that sounds spendy as oh, hell. they'll sell out, too. Oh, yeah, yeah th- this yeah. is what this is. This is it's not, by the way, mm-hmm. this is uh, this is one person can travel with each dog, but a lot of people send the dogs on their own. I mean, it's like literally, I'm just, my dog is, my dog needs to fly. Like, like I would never fly Chauncey in a crate. He's 90 pounds. He's a big boy. But this way, he could be on an actual plane and have people taking care of him. And for the low, low price of nineteen thousand dollars, I can fly him from. No, I don't know what the pricing is, but I'm just, I'm just imagining. Uh, let's see. So far, they've got a. They serve like there's an airport in New York City, but it's not one of the big ones. It's smaller airports: New York, L.A., London, Paris, Chicago, San Francisco, Phoenix, and Miami. So if you're gonna go from any of those cities to another city, and you got a dog, and you just want to light a match to twenty thousand dollars, fly that bad boy, and then he'll love you and yeah. get some treats. That'll be nice. I love it. My knees are crammed into the back of a seat. And, yeah, you know, my, my, yeah. I got a kink in my neck, and it's a baby crying over my left shoulder. Yet your dog is flying sure. in luxury and style. Why not? Sure, that's America. <sighs> That's that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Hey, voting is now open for KQ's Father of the Year. You can check out the dads who made the cut at 92kqrs.com. KQ's Father of the Year is going to take home a brand new grill from Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores. $500 for Dennis Kirk. Sponsored by, of course, Dennis Kirk and Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores. Go to 92kqrs.com. Check out the dads who made the cut. Place a vote, why don't you? Speaking of dads, uh-oh. It is time for round four of the FATs, the Father Aptitude Test. And today, Ryder is on the hot seat. Her dad, Jim, is going to phone in. And we'll see what's going on as far as was Ryder ever paying attention to a thing her dad told her (laughs) about himself. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Thursday, June the 13th. This Sunday is, of course, Father's Day, and we have been having a good time all week with the FATs, the Father Aptitude Test or the Fatherly Aptitude Test, whatever it is. Um, (laughs) What we did, so Monday, if you didn't hear us, uh, Zepp's daughters, Taylor and Sydney, called in. We asked uh, them a series of questions about their old man, and then Zepp came on and answered. uh, To Tuesday, my son Connell. Yesterday, my daughter Marley did it. Tomorrow, Tony's two boys will be appearing. Uh, But today, it's all about Ryder and her dad, Jim. So Jim is joining us right now on the KQ Morning Show. We're going to grill him. A few questions about Jim's uh, life. Jim, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. It's uh, it's great to have you on the show, and uh, and first things first. Hey, uh, you know we love having Ryder on the KQ Morning Show, so uh, I'm going to give you all the credit. Uh, well, I wish I could take credit, but this is all her. <laughs> this is all her idea. Okay, all right, all right, fair enough. Well, um, well, uh, early Happy Father's Day to you, sir. Now we're going to ask you some questions, and uh, you know, obviously, you'll, we'll get your answers, and then we'll then we'll bring Ryder on to see how well she knows. Her old man. Are you ready to run down this list with us? Let's rock. Let's do it. Jim, <laughs> real easy one to start. What's your favorite band, sir? My favorite band? Um, probably the Beatles. Ah, all right. I'm digging on that one. What do you got, Tony? Uh, how about your first concert, Jim? First concert? Yeah. Elton John. Ooh. Yeah. What, what, what era? What year was that, do you think? Met Sports Center, nineteen seventy-two. Mm. Oh, the Mets. Yeah. wow! 
The old Can't Nigel. throw center stage. Hell yeah. Old Nigel Olson back there on the drum kit. Yep. That would have been awesome. It was. All right. All Is right. that... First things first, Jim. I hear that uh, we're both alum of Brown Institute. Correct. You went to Brown Institute. Did you ever hang out at a radio station? Uh, yes, I did. Was it uh, 92.5 on the radio dial? Correct. I was <laughs> I was actually the janitor. Seriously? Like, yeah, no kidding. Ryder told what? me, hit me to this. Not only did he graduate from Brown Institute, actually, I had never graduated. Uh, I dropped out. But uh, you were the old janitor. There were the new janitors, the band for KQ years right. later. But you were the one of the original janitors back when, I bet there was a contact hire, too, when you were cleaning up around 92.5 back in the early days. <laughs> you know, um, that was the general manager when the owners would come out. He... he would point to the the roach pile by the front door and say, "Clean that up." <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I be, I believe you 100, percent and I'm Man, sure our listeners hilarious. do too. All right, that's Jim. Were, that's yeah. That's back when they were in Golden Valley. Oh, we'll have to share some stories over a beer sometime. Wow. Uh, we're going to get uh, back to this uh, fatherly aptitude test. Okay. Were, were you, were you going to add something to that? No. Okay. All right. Here we go. How about a uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie. Dr. Strangelove, oh. or How I Learned to Love the Bomb. Yeah. yeah. Really Hell yeah. yeah. Nice. Full title. Get a high five for that one. Man, that's Peter, fantastic. Peter Sellers was great in that movie. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That is an absolute classic. All right, Jim, yeah. how about this? Uh, favorite team in any sport, pro or college or high school, doesn't matter. Just favorite team. Favorite team? Uh, it's got to be the Twins. There you go. Twinkies. Big game last night. Jeez. Yeah. Even even though I did work for the Toronto Blue Jays down here in spring training for three years, so no but it's kidding. still a twin. All right, Tony. This might be kind of a tough one, Jim, but maybe a, a favorite thing that you did with Ryder that she carries as a treasured memory. That Disney World. Good one. Yeah, that's solid. All right. All right, Jim, I'm thinking about the coolest car. Maybe it was a truck or maybe it was a motorcycle. The coolest motorized a vehicle that you ever owned? Uh 65 Mustang. Hell yeah. Oh. oh. That was my high school car. <laughs> really? Believe it or not. Yep. You're just running the table here, is Jim. That, is that how you met her mom? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, all right. Never mind. Moving along. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let's see what else we got. Jim, what's the most trouble... You ever got into as a kid, say high school or younger, biggest trouble you ever found yourself in? What was it? Um, probably breaking a garage window. Oh yeah, because my dad, my dad was not real happy about stuff like that. So we, <laughs> my brother and I, hustled up and fixed it before he got home. And of course, it didn't look all that great. <laughs> it never does. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was the old wait till your dad gets home. Yeah, oh yeah. Isn't it amazing how, as a kid, when you're trying to fix something like that, you can convince yourself, no, it looks good. It's fine. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll well. never notice. <laughs> and it takes one second for the old man to go, what the hell happened here? Yeah, yeah amazing. He just shook his head and laughed. Oh, oh man. All right, well, you got off lucky that day. Yeah. Tony? Uh, Jim, how about a... a a series of words or a phrase that Ryder will say that you used a lot, you were known for saying. Okay, I got a good one. All right. As long as nobody dies, we can fix it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and, and I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I love it. How about, I don't that's know. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I like it. That's uh, That that could have ended up in our game show as a dad saying a bumper <laughs> sticker. I like it. Uh, Jim... What uh, I, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you drank or if you used to, or but do you have a go-to cocktail or beer that Ryder would say, "Oh yeah, that's what Dad drinks." Um. Well, that's kind of an odd one. She'd say she'd say probably Grand Belt Northeast. All yeah, right, good man. Oh, That'll yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she would say that, but what would you say? What <laughs> Is would there something I say? else? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, whatever cheap wine is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? We'll take either answer from her. If she gets either one okay. of them, we're going to give her. I like the cheap wine. Um, all right, let's see what else we got. Uh, Jim, what is your, if and you may have several, but what is your greatest pet peeve? Greatest pet peeve? Stupid people. But, <laughs> I hear you, brother. There's way, there's way too many of them around. <laughs> Amen. And uh, often I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. Ah, come on. <laughs> Jim, how about a, a quality or a trait that Ryder might have inherited from you? A quality or a trait that, say that again? A quality that, or trait that Ryder may have inherited from you, that so it's something she does um, that that's so you. Um, she can fix things. Oh. Yeah, she does every morning. <laughs> no yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, we noticed. <laughs> we break it, she oh, fixes oh, okay. it. <laughs> yeah, good one. Uh, right. I'm thinking about uh, coolest, uh, here comes Father's Day. Let's go with this one. Coolest Father's Day. Maybe it was something you did together. Uh, maybe it was a gift she got you. What would she say that the coolest Father's Day coolest gift? Coolest Father's or, Day. Yeah. Um, you know, she played golf once with me. No kidding. I, I don't Just see- once. Yeah, just once. Was that the only time she's ever played golf? Yep. How'd that work out? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still alive, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we can fix it. You're still here. That's good. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. We're we're at a cool dozen right here. What do you think? One more. One more, guys. Yeah, one, more, one more. Yeah. Lucky thirteen. Sure. All right, Jim. Jim, we're giving you first class round trip airfare. Any in the world? Anywhere in the world? Where are you going to go? Anywhere in the world. Yes, sir. Um, I'm probably going to go to Norway. Norway. Why nice. Norway? Uh, that's our relatives from there. All right. Okay. Yeah. They, that'll they, do they, it. They, they stayed behind and inherited the farm and all that kind of crap. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what they do over there. All that kind of crap. Yeah. Well, now they're rich and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well then right. go well then get over there we'll send you all right jim well played sir yes it's time Thank to bring you. Ryder back on and then we'll uh Uh-oh. she's back Uh-oh. let's bring out the daughter to see if she's predicted what you'd say all right um Ryder, your dad is uh I, I think he ran the table this is a, a well, fine he got him all right a fine <laughs> set of but no but no they're all right but they're all cool I mean it's like a real like oh man we all want to hang out with Jim now yeah, so no um I mean that's true that's always been true my dad is the coolest hi dad how you doing <laughs> I'm doing well Ryder. head above water checking in from water? Florida no, you know what? Um, we had the big rains down here, but that was about 30 miles south of us, so oh, we got okay. nothing. Oh, that's right. You we got, got Florida. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of rain down there. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's rip off the Band-Aid. I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> All right. From the You're Band-Aid. Nervous? Oh, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get nervous. Thanks, Pops. <laughs> yes. Perfect. You don't get nervous. Perfect. Right. Okay. <laughs> Wow, I like that. All, Thanks, this is this is all still educational for us. We're yeah. learning about Ryder every day. All right, so uh, for, let's rip the Band-Aid off with the favorite band, Ryder. Your dad's favorite band? I'm saying Pink Floyd. Oh! What? What, I, right. what the? Mm. What? Pink, you've said it many times. You've said to me, Pink Floyd's my favorite band. Uh. No. <laughs> Again with the buzzer, Jim. Jim, Jim you got to break the. It? You're gonna have to break the news to her, Jim. The Beatles. That was Mom's favorite band. You guys could never agree on anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Now hold on. Let's. Okay. Let's not cross that line here. It's too early in the morning, Ryder. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. O for one. Pretty I, strong. I can rally. All right. All right. Uh, next up was uh, your dad's first concert. Oh, this one I don't know. I think I can get half a point because I think it was probably at North Auditorium. I'll just guess, uh, like, Pablo Cruz or something lame. <laughs> Pablo Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the shirtless tour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Well, what was it? Elton John. It was Elton John? Where'd you see Elton John? Met Sports Center. Oh. Oh. Uh, I never would have gotten that one. 
Okay. Yeah. I got some I got some tickets from a radio station I worked at. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the garbage. That's fantastic. All right, Ryder, what is your dad's favorite movie? Uh, this one is easy. He's going to tell you that his favorite movie is Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Wow. Yes. And Correct. the full title of the movie as but. well. Now, I would argue that my dad's <laughs> actual favorite movie is Tremors. Oh, yes. Any, That's the second favorite. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime it come, it came on, it, like he would sit down and watch it and then say all the quotes. You know, you broke into the wrong gold darn rec room. Like all that stuff. Anytime. Uh-huh. I've seen that movie a million times because yes. of my dad. That's a good one. Awesome. <laughs> Bo- both fully uh, absolute gold circle movies, sure. both yeah. of them. Yep. Yeah. But but I love the fact that you both, as Zep said, both went with the full title of Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> that is incredible. All right, uh, Ryder, your dad. Dad's favorite team, any sport? Okay, so the answer he thinks that I'm going to say that he probably said, even though uh, he's been working a little bit with the Toronto Blue Jays, like he spent some time working on their, the you know, in the stadium down there for their mm-hmm. spring training. And I know he's been on the field, like playing catch with like legit professional ball players. But he's going to know that I'm going to say the Minnesota Twins. Bam! Well done. That's pretty much exactly right. the answer he gave. <laughs> Wow, this That's is an easy very, one. That's an easy one. They're going to get harder. Joined at the hip, these two. All right. Um, favorite memory, favorite thing, a special moment or or event with Ryder. What was what was your dad's answer? Oh no, was this a Tony question? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I said no sappy stuff. Uh, favorite moment. Um, I'm probably not going to get this one, but I'm going to say when I passed my driver's test. Mm. No. And that was one of my least favorites. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have then? Disney yeah. World. Di- Disney, oh, Disney World. Disney World. And we rode on Space Mountain. We couldn't go to Disney World until I was tall enough to go on Space Mountain. Yeah, that was right. cool. Uh, I closed my eyes that entire ride. I was so freaked out and just opened them up at the top of the roller coaster at one point, and that was it. That's all I remember. <laughs> yeah. You're scared. Yeah, sure. We had, to, uh, we had to wait in so many lines, though. You hate waiting in line. Fast pass. Oh, we, we were not fast pass people, Zap. <laughs> pre, pre fast pass. All right, Ryder, what is the coolest car, truck, or motorcycle your dad has ever owned? Uh, I'm going to say it was, and I'm going to get the year wrong, but it was either a 67 or a 69 uh, Ford Mustang. Pretty close. Very we'll give close. it to you. Well, yeah. Six, yeah. 65. 65. 65. Okay. All right. That's the year you want right there. Oh. All right. The most trouble your dad ever got into when he was a kid, say 18 or younger, most trouble he ever got into, what was it? Okay, I'm probably going to get this one wrong, but my favorite story about my dad getting in trouble when he was a kid is he was like the tech at a, at the school talent show in like junior high or something like that. And uh, one of the girls was doing kind of a lip sync version of Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Were Made for Walking, <laughs> which, <laughs> which uh, was not my dad's favorite song. So in, right. in the middle of the song, he just uh, pulled the curtain shut on her. <laughs> Holy well, that s- Gave her the hook. He gonged her. He did. <laughs> but that legit happened, right, Dad? Yes, it did. Okay. <laughs> Well, what was your answer then? My answer was breaking the garage window, and it was wait till your dad gets home, and oh. your brother, your uncle, and I went and fixed it. <laughs> sort well, of. Great, that's lucky. Yeah, I still uh, I still drive by that garage quite often, and the windows are intact. <laughs> both uh, both great stories, but I can tell you the next time I hear these boots are made for walking, I'll be picturing you shutting that curtain on that yes. poor kid. And, 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 that. and the uh, the young lady doing it was a fairly large. <laughs> the added visual. Have gone with an op. I'm, I'm not going to say anything more. Right, okay. I, and I'm sure there was probably three or four dads there who oh. walked by and slipped you a five dollar bill. Thanks, man. That was good. In a row. <laughs> good to see All right, Ryder. A series of words or maybe a phrase, a catchphrase or a phrase your dad used a lot. Oh, uh, he would always say. And this will just be one of many, but the one that stuck in my brain is, you know, kiddo, I just got the two brain cells left and they're working against each other. (laughs) Wow. That's a good one. Sorry, it's not what Jim answered, Jim. What'd you you say? 
As long as nobody dies, we can fix it. <laughs> yeah. Man. Uh, well, that was also true. Yeah. That, very true. Go, uh, the, yeah. Jim's go-to cocktail or beer order. Uh, I mean, it's generally just a light lager. Um, uh, he's going to tell me that Miller Lite is wrong. Uh, but, you know, he'll drink a grain belt, that sort of thing. Yeah. Bing, bang, boom. There you Give go. The grain belt, Nordeast. Nordeast. Yep. Right. The Nordeast. Nice. Yep. Bam. Or All cheap, right. Or cheap wine. Yep. Or right. cheap wine. Keeps you regular. <laughs> Ryder, what is your dad's greatest pet peeve? Oh, it's got to be driving related. Um, when I was a kid, it was definitely people who were driving too slow in the fast lane. Or, and this was when there were still ashtrays in cars, or as people who throw their cigarette butts out the window. I mean, he okay. covered oh, it with his you know, answer, right? His answer yeah. was broad. She got a little more specific. I, I think, I think you know, we're going to give it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Give me the point. Sure. Jim, Jim mm-hmm. said stupid people. Yeah. Okay. That counts. Yeah, I think but that does count. That everyone's a stupid person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have three left. A quality or a trait of gems that Ryder inherited? Oh, it's like all of them. Um, I'm going gonna, gonna to say sense of humor. Mm. No? <laughs> but you can, you can fix things. Well, a fixer. Yeah. Sure. Fixer. That's what you do here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm glad that you believe that, Dad. <laughs> Come on, don't don't dispel the myth. Okay. We're 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 buying into everything this man tells us about All you, right. Ryder. Yeah, okay. I've got a to do list for you. Great. All right. Awesome. Uh, coolest Father's Day uh, that, that you got. What's the coolest Father's Day gift, if you will, or the coolest Father's Day memory? Oh, well, Dad always said he only wanted one thing for Father's Day, and I got it for him many times, and that was peace and quiet. <laughs> oh! Uh, probably... No? No. Well, a couple of other, I think that it was pretty cool when I was out in, and I did this for Father's Day, birthday, Christmas, all sorts of things. When I was out in Fresno and I would call the bar he was a regular at and (laughs) buy him a gift certificate over the phone for them to just present to him next time he came in. Oh, you're a good kid. That's pretty good. But he's got something else. What'd What'd you say, Dad? Uh, you remember one time you went and hit a bucket of balls? Oh, yeah. I do remember <laughs> yeah. that. It didn't you never did it again. No, it didn't go well. It went pretty badly, no. but yeah. Uh, yeah. I just got a free set of golf clubs from neighbor Dan, so I was going to try and do that oh, again cool. sometime. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how it goes. All it right. It might be a one and a done. <laughs> <laughs> Final question, Ryder. We're going to give your dad round trip, first class airfare anywhere in the world. Where is he going to go? Oh, man. I'm not going to get this one. That's it's got to be someplace with a beach. I'm just going to randomly say Fiji. Well, no, close, no. close. Yeah, Jim, what'd you say? I said Norway. Norway, <laughs> it's cold there. Yeah. Well, that's where all our relatives are. Well, I know, so, but you remember Bob, the Uncle rich, Bob's the already rich been ones? There. Don't argue oh, with the your father. Rich ones. Okay. <laughs> all all right. right, fair enough. Fjords you, are cool. Yeah, did you hear about the? Uh, Outgoing Norwegian guy. Yeah, so outgoing he looked at another man's shoes. <laughs> Boy, it's Jim, uh, Jim, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, sir. Happy, Happy Father's Day this week. Happy Father's Day to you boys, too. Thank you, right Dad. on. Thank Bye, Dad. You. Happy Father's Day. All right. Thanks, Ryder. Great. Oh, Jim's Great awesome. right there. Yeah. Well done, Ryder. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you. The best. He is. I mean, you you did by far the worst of anybody so far. But that's that's neither here nor there. All the memories that he cherished, you hated. <laughs> I, I, every but every wrong answer was as good yes. as the right answer. That was great. You're like, oh, the trouble. The the boots are made for walking. Gong show moment is just outstanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Such Funny. a great story with yeah. the curtain. That's really really great. All right, that was awesome. Uh, Father aptitude test tomorrow. We're going to wrap it up with the Lee boys. Uh, Augie and Hudson are going to be with. I'm already looking very forward to that. Yeah. I'm also looking forward. Oh, wait. Oh, I almost forgot. We have a contest. We want to send you to see Motley Crue at the Louder Than Life Festival this fall. One winner is going to score a trip for two to Louisville, Kentucky for Louder Than Life 2024 featuring four days of rock with Motley Crue and many more great bands. Text the national keyword LIFE to 95819 right now to enter for a chance to win.
Nice. Trevor Anderson, a very funny gentleman. He's at Acme uh, next Wednesday night, 619 for one night only. And he's also going to be in studio with us in just a few moments. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Thursday, June the 13th. Wednesday, June the 19th. One night only at Acme Comedy. Trevor Anderson will be appearing. And Trevor is in studio with us this morning on the KQ Morning Show. Good morning, sir. Hello, how are you? Uh, not, I'm well, thank you for asking. I guess I'm supposed to say, okay, how you doing, dude? <laughs> I, I'm, doing, I'm doing good. <laughs> I forgot we were being polite. Um, so, Trevor, uh, next Wednesday night at Acme, not the average, not the everyday run-of-the-mill comedy show for you, is it? Right. No, I'm uh, recording my debut album. There it is. Yeah. Oh. So you're going to improv the whole thing, not one note, right? Yep, all crowd work. <laughs> it's going to go straight to Instagram reels. Uh, <laughs> No, that's, I, it's it's pretty impressive when someone says, "Oh, who's putting out your record?" Instagram Reels. It's a new company. Yeah. Trust me, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Got to get creative. Yeah. That's um, fantastic. This is a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. I just realized this morning. I it's been about like 15 years. I've been doing stand up, and uh, didn't want to. You know, I always wanted to do an album, but you know, those first few years, I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, I would want to go buy, back and buy all those albums back from people. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> During the, the COVID uh, basement cleaning binge that lasted like two years in my house, I found some of my first notebooks, and there was a page literally, the heading said, the good stuff. And I was like, <laughs> okay, maybe we can use some. I'm reading through it. I'm like, oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sure. I'm, I'm glad I waited. I, I feel good about the, the whole concept, the through line of uh, the album. Great. That's awesome. So 15 years, you that's plenty of time for a lot of highs to go with those lows. So what's one, if I say to you, uh, and I know it's a different answer depending on your mood and the day and the shirt you're wearing, but what's one moment you remember is like a huge breakthrough or just a real high walking off stage? Like one thing where you say it was worth everything for that. Is there is there one thing that comes to mind first? Well, I think one, one of the things that I love about doing comedy is is that you know the community here in the twin cities the, the scene is so strong so i remember one particular evening after just i was hosting at acme you know back in the day and uh it was it was crazy it was tom segura was there yeah. and then chad daniels swung through and oh. brian regan was at a theater and wanda sykes was at another theater, and we're all just i'm like you know 24 years old i'm mm -hmm. you know, like just be like, don't, don't talk to them. They don't care about you at all. But it, the second, you know, like we were all hanging out in the, in the bar after the show is, you know, th they were talking to me, we were all chatting mm -hmm. and, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was kind of a cool moment to be like, Oh, sure. this is, people do this for, for real. Like I, sh I want to do this. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So then of course I have to follow that up with the absolute worst moment. Like <laughs> was it on stage? Was it after a performance? Come on, give me one of those. Um, I remember early on, this is actually the first time my, my now wife, uh, saw me do stand up. I just bombed so hard <laughs> in a hotel bar in Wausau, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, she, she stuck with me and, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was one of those we were, we were driving back. She's originally from Wisconsin, and we were driving to go visit her folks. We had just started dating, and I was like, oh, I got a gig in Wausau. We'll, we'll do that. And then it was just, it was not set up Ooh, for success, man. but, you know. She loves me, and uh, I love her for that. <laughs> she, well, well, she saw the vulnerability. She saw the, you know, there's, there's, you were stripped away. You were naked at the core, and she, and she respected that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> or, or she saw that she could get the upper hand. Yeah, now I yeah. got him down. How long till you got the killer set and redeemed yourself in her eyes? Um, I don't know. She's always been super supportive, and you know, even in that moment, she was like, "Oh, that crowd sucked," and I was like, "Yeah, but it was a little right. two way street there, you yeah. know." Like, I probably could. I handled it better too but yeah i don't know uh yeah we uh we we would go to comedy a lot before we had our kid you know just for like date night you know it's more interesting to us than like just going to see a movie or whatever you never know mm -hmm. what you're gonna see sure. 
And you Trevor, have a three-year-old now, I think. She'll mentioned. be three in July, yeah. She'll be three in July. And does that uh, uh, figure, I suppose, into your act being a parent? That's a big thing. Yeah, there's there's a good chunk of that. I think the working title I have for the album is Stay-at-Home Dude. Because <laughs> I was a stay-at-home dude, and now I'm a stay-at-home dad with a kid yeah. that... Like I said, I just dropped her off at daycare. So yeah. that's a that's a pretty sweet arrangement. Yeah, she goes to school around here. He actually wheeled her over to school and then walked over here to do this gig. So yeah. that's fantastic. So um, so this is your this will be your what third or fourth Father's Day then I guess if she's or third I don't know how does that work Is this your third or fourth? I'm Whatever. not sure. It's all been a blur. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm just happy to make it here. <laughs> <laughs> and and this uh, cat now is running half marathons anyway. Yeah, I did. A couple weekends ago, I was in Fargo doing a, a run of the, the album, and I noticed they were doing the marathon weekend, so I, I did the half marathon it, that morning. <laughs> it was impromptu? You just jumped I, I, in on No, it? I signed up like a couple weeks ahead of okay. time. I was like, oh, I'm already going to be there. I might as well... Try to get some laps in. Are you working to a full marathon? Have you done a no, full marathon? No, ne- never. I, no. How doing the, the half? half was, it was enough to make me be like, I don't want to ever do a full marathon. <laughs> I'm just, I'm 36. I'm at the point where I got to try to either exercise more or change my, my diet and Ooh. drinking. And I'm, I'll start with doing some jogging. You know, they, <laughs> they say actually space it out just a few miles a day. Don't go for 13 at once, dude. That's not how that, you don't get to work out once a week and do it all in one day. Oh, I thought I was done for the summer. <laughs> no, that's, that's not, that's not the recipe for success. Trevor Anderson's in studio. He's at Acme Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, June 19th, one night only as he will be recording his album. Um, first comedy album you remember listening back to as a kid or CD or whatever, but was there one that you just played over and over and over ever in your life? There was a, a Comedy Central compilation album called mm-hmm. Invite Them Up. And uh, that was one. It was just a smattering of a bunch of different, you know, short sets, some people doing like character work and stuff like that. And yeah, just early on growing up in rural Wisconsin, hanging out in my parents' basement, I just watched Comedy Central presents pretty much every weekend, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And then, like I said, moving to Minneapolis, I was like, oh, I. I think I could actually do this, you know. Sure. Um, so, what's what's the deal with the merch these days? You've always had a very unique merchandise. We've discussed this with you before. Is there anything new that anybody could look, be, be looking forward to for Wednesday? Uh, for the comedy, I, I still make hand carved artisanal kitchen utensils. That was a <laughs> it was a COVID hobby that I was I was on the road and one of the opener dudes he was selling stickers afterwards and he ended up making more money than me and I was like. Oh, I need to get some merch. So I just right. grabbed these spatulas that I, I made with my dad in his wood shop. And, you know, that's... Uh, I uh, I thought that was a bit until I saw <laughs> the wood. And I was like, oh, wait, know, this right. is real. This I, is this is fantastic. I think yeah. we were at the same show. And we saw him and he yeah. pulled that out. And I went, oh, great. He's going to do some prop. Is he <laughs> going to throw it at someone? Is this a yeah. Gallagher thing yeah. that's going to happen up here? That's is right. there a spatula someone? A tomato maybe? Uh, but And then it looked really cool. And I thought, that, that's actually... That's pretty yeah, badass. My, my dad taught me how to do woodworking during the pandemic, and I, you know, it's kind of fun to just. The joke is, I'm a stay at home dad with a kid that goes to school, so I got to try to do something with my free time. <laughs> <laughs> we we did get new merch. I play in a Almond Brothers tribute, the Brothers Almanac, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of comics sell koozies, like you know, for beers or whatever. And, sure. And so, as a tribute band, we're like, well, we can't really just sell Allman Brothers CDs, you know, go to Goodwill and <laughs> just get used Allman Brothers CDs. So now we have koozies that say Statesboro Coos on it. So we'll be oh, selling those this Saturday at Excelsior pre- Brewing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty strong. Oh, you guys are playing this Saturday night. Yep. Yeah, just kind of a Father's Day weekend at Excelsior Brewing. Two sets. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Allman it, Brothers. It, and what, what do you play in the band? I play keys and vocals. Oh, outstanding. So. I got to get out and see you guys. And of course, the great Dickie Betts uh, passed away yeah. not that long ago. And yeah. You, you, you got to have an offshoot of your own tribute band for sea level because, you know, Chuck Lavelle yeah. left and have yeah, that. They're just for the real insiders would know what's going on with that. Yeah. Oh my God, this guy takes it very seriously. Is there ever a moment when you're in the middle of a of an Almond Brothers jam where you think to yourself, "We really should have played like Ramon songs. This is too hard." <laughs> no, I mean playing the keys. I just basically do blues chords and listen to two great guitar players. So <laughs> I just kick back and we. I just you know hang out and look at the bass player and we're like, "All right, this is cool." <laughs> yeah, that works. So what were, did you, I mean, were you playing piano like as a kid? Was this something you've been doing? I mean, when did you start? Oh, yeah. There was uh, 
mandatory piano lessons growing up. Uh, but I stuck through it, and I went to school for music at the U of M um, education. And then when I graduated, I was emceeing at Acme and kind of gigging with my band. And, you know, I was not saving any money, but I was paying my rent. And I was like, if I don't do this thing now, I'm not going to ever do it, you know? Right, so, yeah. right. You ever take the keyboard up on the stage with you and do anything with it? No, I I haven't, partially because there's... There's a lot of people who do that kind of yeah. musical comedy, and they do it so well. I'm like, I I don't want to, you know, phone it in or you mm-hmm. know do yeah. some cheap stuff. Yeah. I kind of like keeping them separate. Yeah. Trevor Anderson's with us on the KQ Morning Show at Acme Wednesday, June nineteenth, one night only, recording uh, his debut comedy album. If we walk into a gym right now and I give you ten free throws, how many are you going to hit? No warm up, just you got to shoot ten free throws. Uh, maybe one or two. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not. I'm not a basketball. I'm, I'm six foot two, and my my brothers are tall. My dad's six six. When we moved to the small town in in Wisconsin, I could tell the high school, you know, g- gym teacher, you know, basketball coach oh. was like, "Oh, we got, oh yeah, yeah, we got." High. I was like, "I'll be at every game playing the trombone in the pep band." <laughs> 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 well, did uh, did pops play as a kid? No, not really. We we were always more like you know. I, that's part of the reason I got into the Allman Brothers stuff is you know he he raised me on like the classic rock stuff, a little bit more prog. Like mm-hmm. Yes, I think is his favorite band. So yeah, I was just always more interested in in the musical side of things and and performing and stuff. Um, how many brothers? I have two. Just is it just the three of you? Are there any yep. sisters? Nope, no sisters. Um, but that's a big, that's a lot of big dudes growing up in a yeah. house. I mean, did everybody get along, or were there yeah. some real? Were, were you throwing hands over the last bite of mac and cheese? What was it like in the in the? What was the vibe in the house? No, we all got along. We we're all, you know funny people. Always, uh, I think my parents they they tricked us to cooperating by buying us a video game system like a Super Nintendo or a PlayStation, but never any games. So we had to, <laughs> the three boys, we had to like pool our money. Like, hey, if we each toss in 20 bucks, we can get way more video games. So, <laughs> so yeah, they tricked us into into sharing stuff with each other. <laughs> sure. So um, it's Father's Day this Sunday. Um, as, a, as a kid, though, your dad, obviously, he taught you woodworking. You said that was just something that happened during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, we... He he's always had a wood shop. Um, okay, and like my grandpa, his dad was you know a flooring uh, and siding installer, so he had his own business. Uh, always a lot of putzing around in wood shops in the Anderson family tree. So I'm happy to continue with the weirdest use of wood, sp- sure. wood shop time I, <laughs> making yeah, spatulas. I've always thought I've always associated woodworking with uh, musicians, and the reason is uh, some of the people in my family are really into woodworking, and they also can carry a tune. I can't. I'm on mom's side, uh, yeah. monotone, bad ear, uh, couldn't put together a frame to save my... I remember going to shop class, and we just had to make a freaking picture frame, and I botched <laughs> it so bad, I ended up in Homac and can make a killer blueberry pie, by the way. Hey, that's- uh, what, what about your brothers? Did they break in one direction or another? You got some woodworkers in there. Anyone else in the entertainment industry? No, they're they're both teachers. My my younger brother is an art teacher. Yeah. Um, my older brother did do. He worked for the Minnesota Historical Society as a reenactor for a while. Really? So I'm. I was like. I always used to joke like I'm not the weird. I don't have the weird job in the family. <laughs> is it like Civil War or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was kind of like Fort Snelling. So oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 firing the cannon and sure. Sweating all, all summer in those wool. Yeah, I don't know. That's maybe why he's not doing it anymore. Yeah, no kidding, man. I, I hear the word reenactor and I, I reenactment. I'm, I just think Southern accent is, well, the Battle of Vicksburg should have gone oh, to yeah. the boys in gray. I, yeah, I'm no, glad I, to know that's. I'm glad to know that that happens elsewhere than just the deep south. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They have one out here, Fort Snelling. I've I've taken the kids out there a couple of times. They've been bored. They cry. They want to leave. And I'm like, no, no, no. They're going to fire the cannons. Uh, you know, which definitely made them cry. But I had a good time. Yeah, Trevor. Uh, I don't even know why this just occurred to me. But can you juggle? If I put three tennis balls in your hands, you got any work with that? Yeah, I can juggle a little bit. All right. I, I have no idea why it just occurred to me to ask you, but you strike me as a possible juggler. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or to be yeah, oh, I, I would love to be able to juggle. Trevor, can just you a- do a backflip? No, no. I, I mean, I haven't tried, so I can Trevor, maybe try on air. If you- Trevor, have you ever been tased by an officer of the law? No. That doesn't no. surprise me. No. Have, I, have you ever been arrested? No. Ever been in a bar fight? 
We've been close with the band, but there we're always... There you go. There you go. Just, like, adjacent. Never, like, us, you know... I, you know, there's maybe some bars where they, you know, like they want both music, country and western or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're trying to do like jam prog rock st- songs that are like seven minutes long and they're like, no. Just have them taking the keyboard up some, some redneck's head. Yeah, no. I, we're, we're very much a, a flight, not fight type of vibe. <laughs> well, see, that's that's one very big difference between you and the actual Allman Brothers. Yeah. Those yeah. They, those guys weren't afraid to to mix it up back in the day. They Probably lived a little harder other. than we do. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Trevor Anderson's at Acme Wednesday night, June nineteenth, one night only. Recording his album. Uh, you are the first man to say either putzing or smattering on the KQ Morning <laughs> Show, and you threw them both out this morning. So I just want—I don't want to forget that, uh, that I appreciate—I appreciate any new verbiage coming our way. Thank you for that. Yeah, my pleasure, uh, Trevor. It's always a pleasure to see you. It's great to have you on the show. Anytime you got something cooking. So again, Acme next Wednesday, but then this Saturday the band is playing where uh excelsior brewing yeah so that's excelsior should be fun. brewing get yeah. your almond brothers freak on with the brothers almanac i know that might be uh, my father's day when is that happening uh I'm it's 7 30 so we're doing 7 30 to 10 three hours we should get a couple handful of almond brothers songs in there <laughs> <laughs> do a full mom jam <laughs> fantastic I did. A, you know what? We were at a pool hall years and years ago, and they had the, one of the first ever CD jukeboxes that we saw. And uh, we went for three straight mountain jams on the E to Peach <laughs> album. <laughs> and we, we, we shot pool for the first one and then left, having played it two more times, knowing that people had 90 minutes of mountain jam in their go. billiard <laughs> night. All right. It's always a pleasure, brother. Thanks for coming yeah, by. Thank you. On this day, June 13th, 2003, Roger Clemens, as a member of the New York Yankees at Fenway Park in Boston, won his 300th game as a starter and got his 4,000th career strikeout. Uh, He became only the third person in the 300-4,000 club, if you will. Steve Carlton and Nolan Ryan, the other two. The difference between Clemens and Steve Carlton and Nolan Ryan is, hang on, let me see if I can remember. Oh, that's right. Roger Clemens was glowing because he was so high on steroids. He gave (laughs) off a weird green hue. He was like a human-formed northern lights walking around Fenway that night. Uh, 40 years old. And still throwing as hard, if not harder than ever in his career. And he loved to say things like, well, it's a lot of hard work and I'm proud to say it's paid off. Jacked to the nines in a way Barry Bonds could only hope to be. I never cared for Clemens. He was always a douchebag. Sorry, is it obvious? Yeah. (laughs) Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. 92 KQRS.